Hi everybody, it's Matthew here from Bead Spider. How are you all doing today? It's time for another Bead Spider tutorial. This one, it's gonna be lots and lots of fun. I'm gonna be showing you essentially the technique which is called flat spiral stitch. So if you've never heard of this one before, it's a really nice, easy beginner's technique that is, it looks so effective, but is actually Really, really, really easy. Perfect for beginners. If you've never made a piece of jewelry in your entire life, this one is a good place to start because it looks fantastic. Uh, my name, of course, if you don't know, is Matthew. I'm a... Uh, whoop, one second, there we go. No, is it going to happen for me? No, it doesn't want to happen. Oh no, I had a little name tag which pops up and says my name. There we go, now I've got it working. There you are. I'm Matthew and uh, this is a Beat Spider stream. As per usual, we've got lots of people here who are watching both on Facebook and on YouTube. So I will say a little hello to everybody who we've got. Let's see uh, who's already joined us. So of course we have Rebecca is here. She was nice and early. Uh, we've got Dana as well. Eugenia is here. Um, we've got Janet. Irina says hi from Croatia. Thanks for watching us, Irina. Uh, Stacy is here from Ohio. We've got, oh, just pop that over there. Uh, we've got Carol as well, and Janet, and Rhonda is here in Australia. She says she's very excited for this tutorial. Uh, Linda is here from Belgium. We've got Esther from Windy But Warm in Preston. Well, it is windy but cold here in Cheltenham in the UK. Uh, I've got Azra here as well. She's in sunny Essex. Um, Colleen is here, Jen, lots and lots of people. Uh, Jen is getting ahead of the uh, getting ahead of the game. She's already ordered three of our kits, which if you don't know, we are actually running an offer, which we often do, uh, where you can get our kit at 15% off. Uh, so any three or more, you can get at 15% off. We often do that. Uh, I should also mention that last week's kits, which I'll show you them just here on the table, are still on discount. So you can still get 10% off your um, uh, Vienna bracelets, which is this one here using our micro crystals. All of our micro crystal kits are still on sale. So uh, that's the, the Vienna just there, which has those gorgeous micro crystals in it. The Monaco is also on sale, but if you don't know what micro crystals are, go watch last week's video. I did a whole video on uh, the size 11 seed bead crystals, but the, the Jubilee, Jermaine has stolen my finished Jubilee bangles. She's been wearing them all week, so I've only got the semi-made ones, but essentially uh, all of our kits from last week are still on sale if you want to get them as well uh, with those gorgeous sparkling size 11 seed beads in them. Uh, they're all, here you go, this is the purple one that I couldn't find to show you last week, which has got that gorgeous purple colour in it. But anyway, this week's tutorial is all about our Entice necklace. So if you want to know what that looks like, this is what the actual piece looks like. So you can see they've got this gorgeous rainbow colour through the middle. It looks a little bit more yellowy uh, on my screen. Let's have a look if it looks better on the main screen. It looks strangely yellow. I'm not sure why it's as yellow as this, uh, but I might have to I might have to fiddle with the settings and see why it's looking so so yellow. Uh, but anyway, that's one of the colors there. We've also got this gorgeous purple tone as well, which uh, is, it looks really, really dark for some reason. All of the, I tell you, the contrast is really high. Have I got my thing set up properly? I thought I did. Let's just have a little look. But anyway, while I uh, fiddle with the settings, I'll show you the other colors, should hopefully fix. This one is a brand new color. This one here, I absolutely adore, uh, which is our Azure Sea color. Uh, but the nice thing that I like about this is the flat spiral technique. So you can see it just here, they all overlap each other. Once you learn the technique, it's just repeat, 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 until you have a fully finished gorgeous necklace. There's 10 colors to choose from. This is the one I'm going to demonstrate with, which is our mermaid colorway, which is absolutely spectacular. It's got that really rich, 
sh I'll show you what the crystal looks like in a minute. Uh, crystal through the center. This one is the gold just here. And then we've also got an electric blue. There's, there's 10 colors. There's a lot of colors. Uh, you're wearing them. Uh, then we've got this nice electric blue one here. We've got a clear one as well, which goes with everything. And we have the silver and clear. So there's a lot of different colors to choose from. Whichever one takes your fancy, that's the one to, uh, to go for. But anyway, I will show you what products we will be using. I'll just take a moment just now to see if I can get the color to look a little better because it is very red for some reason. Let me just see if I can fix that. Just give me one second to play with it. Uh, maybe if I, whoops, that's a bit better, isn't it? Much better. Okay. How do we like that? Now that looks a lot more accurate, doesn't it? So I can show you the colors very, very quickly. Hopefully they're going to look a lot more accurate now. Uh, there's that gorgeous purpley one, the silver and the clear, then the blue. Whoops. I've got so many to show you. It's it's a it's a, a mission and a half. This one is the gold, which looks spectacular. The rainbow one is this one just here, which is really really popular. Always with always will be. This one for sure is going to be uh, the best seller, I reckon. Uh, this one is the one I'm demonstrating. The mermaid color. There we go. We can see it a bit better now. I don't know why it looked so intense just before, but I've got that fixed now. Uh, but you can see, I'll show you what these crystals look like. The Azure Sea and the blue. Here it is, the electric blue. There's also the blush color, which I don't have the demo piece here, and a midnight blue. So this one is the electric blue. There's a midnight blue, which is a lot darker as well. But anyway, let's have a look at some of the beads. I'm going to be using three by four crystals, so crystal rondelles. And I'm also going to be using some 3x7 crystal bricks. So, I'll show you what the bricks look like first. I've got a big hank of them right here. So these are what the mermaid crystals look like. There's a big hank of them, so you can really see. It sort of blows the camera out so it'll actually see it. But they've got this gorgeous sort of turquoise and purple crystal that runs right through the middle which is this color just there. This is going to be running through the center of our design. Then we have our three by four mil crystals, which in this particular case, we've got this gorgeous sort of green and gold tone on like a black. So this one is a really nice evening color that we've got here. And then with that, we have some size 10 Preciosa seed beads in this gorgeous deep green mermaidy mermaid bluey green color. So it all comes together to create the one gorgeous little design, which is this one just here. So this is the one I'm going to demonstrate with. You can see there are your three by sevens through the middle. You've got your seed beads and then your crystals sort of adorn the outside edges. So it's going to be it's going to be a really sort of short, straightforward, simple tutorial today. It doesn't take too long because once you've learned the technique, you just repeat, 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 repeat until you are finished. So it is really, really easy. First things first, though, we need to cut ourselves a piece of thread. So you need about two meters or so, uh, a little bit less, whatever's like a comfortable working length. You can always change your thread quite easily. And the instructions that we give you do include the information about how to change your threads, how to bring in a new thread. Some like useful information is in there as well, but you've got full photographs and everything for the whole process. It's all covered in the instructions here. That's if you get our little kit, which I'll show you that at the end. Let's get onto some actual demonstrating, shall we? So first things first, we need a little stopper bead. Any old bead that you have laying around the house, uh, you can you can use those. By the way, if you want to have a look at any of the products that we have here, uh, for example, sweet to hear, she says, what are those pipe-shaped beads called? They are crystal bricks. They're three by seven mil millimeter crystal bricks. But if you go and have a look on the beads, there's a link 
in the description. It'll take you to the Bead Spider website. Uh, you can view it all there, but let's get on with some tuition. I won't waste any more time just talking about things. So here we go. First things first, thread on a bead, bring it down to the end. If you leave yourself a tail, you can use that to make yourself a clasp. So you want to leave a little bit. I'm only going to leave myself a little because I'm going to use a, a shorter length for the clasp, I think, today. I'll do a second one. But anyway, it does tell you in the instructions how much tail to use for your little clasp section. But we're going to just pass through this one little bead a couple of times. There we go. And that will lock in place. Now let's start zooming in, shall we? There. So, the very first thing that we're going to do is start using some of those little crystal bricks that we have to make the, the core of our design. So essentially what we're doing is creating like a, a little core, a, a central spine of our design, and then we're going to be adorning that with those crystals and those seed beads. So if I just grab myself a couple of these little crystals, just undo the strand real quick. Uh, it's tied in a knot, of course, which is inconvenient. I thought they were already open. But let's just undo this fella. All right, I'm just going to just cut it, I think. Couldn't be bothered with this faffing around, trying to undo knots. Here we go. So anyway, grab yourself. These are the little faceted crystal bricks just here. So I'll just show you what they look like when they're loose. So you can see these are the ones that I'm using in the mermaid. So they've got that gorgeous purple, gold, and sort of aquary green tones all about them, like a whole color range that goes all the way from like your purple tones towards being more greeny, bluey tones, which is pretty much exactly what you'd expect from like that nice uh, mermaid tone. So first things first, let's thread on two of our crystal bricks. And I'm gonna just slide them all the way down to the bottom of our stopper bead here. So there we go, we've got one, two, three, four, five. There we are. And bring them all the way down so they're sitting nicely on top of that stopper bead just there. We're gonna grab ourselves a couple of crystals as well, which these are also tied in, in a very annoying knot. So let's just cut that one too. Uh, and we're gonna be using some seed beads here as well. So there's both, I'll just pop at the bottom what the actual uh, things we're using are, and I'll pop it over into left-hand view in a minute. Uh, so what products are we using? So I'll just pop the materials up in just a moment. There we go. So I'm grabbing myself out some of those three millimeter by four millimeter rondelles as well. Uh, and here we go. Let's just bring it up. There we go. So, yeah. First things first, we need five seed beads, one crystal, and then five more seed beads. So if I show you this just real quick, just here, we're going to pick up one, two, three, four, five seed beads, one of our three by four crystal rondelles, and then five more little seed beads. So one, two, three, four, and five. So there you go. This is essentially what we're using to create one of our spirals. So basically, it's nice and easy to use. Uh, we'll just thread it all the way down to the very, very base, and we're gonna loop around See, see this? See how we've got them in a line? We're going to loop around and pass through both crystal bricks one more time. Remember how I said this is the spine? We're going to just keep going through the spine and adding uh, crystal bricks to it each time and then the little beads on either side. So pull it tight and then there you go. You can see it's now sitting nicely to the side. So I'll just flip it over real quick. Let's pick up ten more... Uh, sorry, five more seed beads, one crystal, and then five more seed beads. So five seed beads, one crystal, and then five more seed beads. One, two, three, four, five. So you got your ten seed beads with a crystal in the middle. We're coming out of this part of the bead here. So let's exactly the same loop around 
and we're going to pass through both crystals one more time. So see that? There we go. Pull all the way through and lock that into place. There we are. And this is kind of going to create that first of what we call spirals. So if we just see that there, you can see you've got one loop on one side, one loop on the other. So now let's continue. You, you're ready. You're going to be surprised at how simple this technique is for how effective it looks. So if we just slide on down the next little cube, uh, sorry, the, the next little brick. Uh, there we go. Slide that down. Now we're going to do the exact same thing again. So we pick up one, two, three, four, five seed beads one crystal and then five more seed beads in the exact same way five and now this time we're going to go back all the way through from this side loop around and we're going to go through just the top two bricks here so if we just bring our needle into the gap there see that we'll go through this brick here through the next brick Pull it all the way tight so that that's going to sit nicely on top whoops, of our previous work. So I'll just flip it over again. I just dropped it there, of course. There we are. So now that's sitting nicely on top just there. So now I'll just pop this over onto the other side. I'll do this in right hand view in a minute. I'll do a couple more rows in left hand view and then I'll switch over to right hand view. Uh, for the remainder. So we're going to pick up five seed beads, a crystal, and then five more seed beads, exactly the same. And just like before, we're going to loop back two bricks earlier, go through one brick, see that? I'm passing through the one. And if I just get it in position, I can go through both bricks at the same time. If I hold it all in position, try and get my thread nicely onto the top here, pull it tight, and there you go. Now we've got two little repetitions. See that? Really easy. So now I'll do it once more in left hand view and then I'll do it a couple in repetitions in right hand view. But basically we pick up one of our bricks and we're going to just slide it down on top of our previous work. And just like we did before, so easy. One, two, three, four, five beads one crystal and five more seed beads. One, two, three, four, five. Loop back two crystals and we'll go into that brick right there. And as we pull it all the way through, just keep your thread on top. This is the, the key to it is making sure your thread stays nicely on top and sort of out of the way. So it doesn't get caught anywhere else. There we go. Let's flip that onto the other side. And now let's pick up one, two, three, four, five seed beads, one crystal, five more seed beads, one, two, three, four, five. Loop back through two beads. There we go, through two bricks and then just pull that nice and tight. So once it gets longer, it gets easier and easier and easier, really, funnily enough. Uh, so let's just keep going. There we go. And now I'll pop it into right-hand view for you all so that you guys get the, the idea. Um, so let's pop it into right-hand view now. Here we go. Uh, and we're gonna do the same thing again. So if I pick up one of my crystal bricks onto my needle. We're going to slide it down to the top of our work, just like so, like that. There's a couple of little tricks that I'll tell you about that you need to be aware of when you're doing this, which is where you can get caught out a little bit. But I'll just show you real quick. We'll do a couple of iterations in the right hand view. So there we go, five seed beads, one crystal and five more seed beads. One, two, three, 
four, five. Let's go back. So we're coming out of this bead here. We're gonna go back one, back two, and into the crystal just here, into this little brick. There we go, through there. So that, see, we're going through both this one and this one. Pull it all the way up. Try not to let it get caught or anything. Pull tight. And there you go, that's gonna sit nicely in position there. Pop it over onto the opposite side so that it's laying on the other side so that I can just keep working with the same hand. You don't need to move the work left and right. You can just, sorry, move your hands left and right, like doing one on this side, then trying to do one on that side. You don't have to do that. You can just flip it over onto the other side. It is important though that you keep your work so that you're working from the same side every time. So what I mean by that is try not to turn your work over. If you turn your work over, you sort of start that what was on the top becomes on the bottom and what was on the bo bottom becomes on the top and so forth. So it's a little bit different uh, to, to, like you get a different effect. It doesn't quite work properly if you keep turning it over. So you wanna be careful to make sure that you're continuously working in the same direction so that you keep getting that gorgeous effect happening again and again and again and again, all in the same direction. But what I mean though exactly, just to show you, is see how this is nicely on the top? If it accidentally turns over, all of a sudden it's on the bottom. So when you're trying to loop back, you'd add your next one, but it's gonna go over the top of this one here and they're gonna be around the wrong way. So it's not quite in the same place. So you've gotta make sure you've always got it so that it's on the top at the back, on the top, on the back, on the top and the back. And then you just keep going. Just, you know, you don't even need to think about it. You can just chill out now. You can go and watch a movie. You can, you can do whatever you want. You hardly even have to think about it. Just pick up, slide on one crystal cube, slide it down, pick up five seed beads. One, two, three, four, five. Pick up a crystal, five seed beads. One, two, three, four, five. Loop back two beads. So through there and through the next and then just keep your thread over the top of all your work and let's pull that tight. There we go. That's the next one added, but let's roll it over so that it's on the opposite side. And now I can work on the same side again. One, two, three, four, five. One little crystal. One, two, three, four, and five. And then once again, let's just loop back through two crystals, two of our crystal bricks. You can see they're really cool because they've got these faceted edges. They're not like hard corners. They've got little cuts on the surfaces of uh, the sides. See that? So it's sort of bezeled. Beveled? Bezeled? Bezeled. Bezeled's the word I'm after. So they've got this really nice little bezeling that makes them look really extra sparkly and extra spectacular. It's a whole extra face that catches the light. So when they're when you're wearing it, you can see it's absolutely shining. Some of them look green, some of them look purple, but also, if, uh, there you go, see look, now if I turn it over, you can see some of the purple ones. See, they look purple on one side, green on the other on some of them. There's a little bit of color everywhere. So look, it's, it's a lovely little design, isn't it? So we don't have to go back and forth and back and forth and create like a circular spiral. This one is called a flat spiral because we're just doing it flat, always flat. I'll do one last iteration. We, we could turn this, I mean, if you wanted to, you could very easily just continue along and just make it either a necklace or you can make yourself a really nice, just short little bracelet too. See, look, if you, if you wanted to, you can just make it, whatever size it needs to be, and there it is as a really, really nice bracelet just there. So this one, of course, uh, is is very popular. I'll show you the crystal of it, but I'll also show you how we're gonna do the clasp. See, there's the there's the, uh, the rainbowy one there, which looks really, really nice. Uh, but this one, again, I'll show you what the crystals look like. 
They're really spectacular. This all came just in our recent uh, arrival of crystals, which uh, that's why we had a load of new micro crystals. We've got loads of gorgeous colors of these bricks as well. So you can go and get those. Don't they look spectacular and so shiny? They're so sparkly. Look at them. I absolutely love them. Uh, I'll show you. Ah, Rhonda asked me to show her the what the pink looks like. I can show you what the crystals through the middle are. I've got the bricks just here, which I'll show you. And then once I've shown you that, I'll show you what the clasps look like. Uh, how we how we're going to do the clasp? Because this is a really really short easy tutorial on this one. Um, here we go. Let's have a look at the 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 crystals for the pink. Sorry about that loud and annoying crunchy plastic noise. Here we are. They're so new, they're still coming in their uh, original packaging. So this is what that central crystal looks like for that pink, uh, that lovely summer blush, it's called. There it is there. That's what that crystal looks like. It is gorgeous. So spectacular. But anyway, this is um, for you, Rhonda. If you're still watching and you wanted to know what the pink one looks like, it's this, which looks really nice because it's quite close to like a skin tone, especially if you're pale like me, real pale. Uh, it looks really nice on your skin. But yeah, so that's what that little crystal looks like. But now let's sort of continue on and I'll show you how you could turn this into like a little mini bracelet if you if you wanted to. So this one, I'll show you now what we do to do the clasp. So you can pretend you would just keep working, 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 working until all of a sudden you have a lovely long piece of this sort of nature. And what we're going to do is create on there this, this is like a, a nice little section that we've got here for extending the length to be the exact size you want it to be. So it's a way easier way of getting it to fit you exactly. So it's your exact size every time. So basically what we'll do is create these little double strand loops all the way up. And then I'll show you it with the, uh, the little beaded ball class bit because they're really fun to make. I love making these, so I'm going to do that. But anyway, we're going to create these little sections up here up the edge and then uh, and then we'll do our ball loopy bit, which is lots of fun. So hopefully I've got enough thread for this. So let's have a look. So first things first, uh, I need to, once I've got myself at the, the very, very end just here, this is pretty much all you need to do to finish off. This is what it will look like at the end. So once you've done one side and the other side, hey presto, you're ready to add that clasp section. So I'll just add the very, very first one of those ones. But basically all we're going to do is little groups of 11 seed beads. You can do less if you want to, but I'm going to do it with little groups of 11 and then a four mil, uh, a three by four mil crystal. So 11 seed beads, then a crystal, 11 seed beads, then a crystal. And we're gonna do it so that we have, um, here you go, see look, 11 beads and a crystal, 11, oh, I missed the question there. I think someone put up a question for me. I wasn't, I wasn't reading it, oh well. Uh, but anyway, yeah, 11 beads and a crystal, 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 11 beads and a crystal. Obviously, I'm only gonna do it sh uh, a mini version because uh, we could pretend that this is a bracelet. You could just make like a really cute little bracelet that just has this nice centrally bit there. Uh, with uh, with this sort of effect just there. You could just make it like a, a mini piece if you wanted to. So essentially, the way we'll do that, I'm going to pick up my 11 beads and a crystal. I'll just do a couple of iterations because otherwise it would take forever. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. There's the first 11 beads just there. See that? Just like that. Pick up one crystal. And then we'll pick up 11 more beads. And then one more crystal. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. There it is. One more crystal. 
And now we can add on the little ball section of our clasp. So if we're going to do that, what we'll do is pick up a few little seed beads. One, two, three. Three ought to be enough, just to give us a bit of spacing. And we're going to use one of these Aurora round crystals. I absolutely love using these. They look like little bubbles, which is so cool. But in this instance, essentially what I'm going to do with it is use it at the center of the core of my little beaded ball just here, which is going to be part of my claspy bit. So again, I've showed you guys this little technique before, but uh, you can never get enough of it, can you? It's always a really fun little clasp to make, and I really enjoy making it. So we're going to make it one more time. So what we'll do is basically we're going to pick up enough little beads to get around the edge of our of our little piece here. So one, how many beads do I need to pick up? One, two, three, four, five, six, six beads is it? Is that all? Uh, yeah, six beads. Easy. Six is enough. One, two, three, four, five, six. You don't want to use too many when you do this because it sort of creates like a bobbling effect, which you don't want. You want it to be nice and flush against the size of your little pearl. So there we go. There's six little beads just there. Um, it doesn't matter too much if there's a teeny gap down at the base because we'll probably fill that. And it doesn't matter if there's a little gap at the top either because we'll fill that too. So I'll go round it again. One, two, three, four, five, six beads. I'll just pop this over to the side and we'll pass loop around a lot like we did with our crystal, uh, our little crystal bricks. We're going to just add these little loops around it, but I'll shift this one over again, pick up six more little beads. One, two, three, four, five, six, and we'll pass through it again, push them over to the side. So now we've got three of them on. One, two, three, four, five, six. A reason that this works really nicely with these bubbly looking Aurora crystals is because they've got lovely big holes. The bigger the hole, the more times you can just add loop after loop after loop, and it will give you a really nice sort of effect like this. Uh, don't worry about this little loose bit at the bottom. We're going to fix that in a second anyway. But I'll just do maybe one or two more little loops. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Go back up there. And just try and keep that nicely inside the gap. I'll do, I'll do one last one. I could probably do a couple, but I'll just do one because we don't want to run... Uh, too long doing this, you get bored. One, two, three, four, five, six. And now we have to make sure that we keep our thread. See how there's a nice big gap here? We want to keep our thread so that we are inside of this gap. So if we pull it too tight too soon, we want to make sure we've got it nicely aligned. Ready? So that it goes inside that gap and they're not crossing over each other or anything like that. You don't want them to have them crossing over. And that's going to give us a nice little ball clasp at the top there. Now, how are we going to turn around, I hear you say? I heard it all the way from wherever you are in the world. How am I going to turn this around? So we're going to just pick up one last bead and skipping without going back into the bead or anything. We're going to just go straight back down the center of this big Aurora bead. So see that lovely big hole there? Let's just pass straight back down and that's going to just lug nicely into the gap at the very, very top of our work just here. So there it is, pops nicely into the center. It's this one little bead. Which one even is it? I can't even tell anymore. Maybe it's this one? I think it's this one here. So there you go. It hides in there. And you know how I said we've got this sort of looseness at the bottom? Well, let's fix that. Let's just go straight down into those beads. One, two, three beads and into our crystal. And as we pull that tight, try and keep my thread in the way. There we go. Pull that tight. And that's going to just get that nice and firm against that little space just there. We can now pick up 11 seed beads. So we'll go give myself a little bit extra thread here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11 
and just so the reason we picked up 11 in case you don't remember is because we had 11 beads just here we want it to match exactly so let's go into the next little crystal below and try not to get it caught on my clasp there we are we're going to just pull that down so that it sits nicely beside the other 11 beads now we can pick up 11 more one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven little beads and we're going to just jump directly across into the end of our little crystal here whoops i dropped a bead pick one up again into that little crystal there we'll go down two even because that will give us something we can loop back up through if we wanted to. But then as we pull that tight, ta-da, that's going to give us a really nice, neat little clasp strappy bit. See that? So that's as easy as it takes. Like, that's, that's, that's as hard as it gets. That's the whole thing. That is everything you need to know for making this, other than when you make the other side of your thing, just make it into a loop rather than doing your little ball that's literally everything that you need to know to make such a gorgeous design isn't that like the best thing about jewelry making is that so often once you've learned a basic technique you just repeat 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 and it's done it's as easy as that. So it's a nice, really, really simple beginner's project where you don't have to think too much. You can just make something beautiful and it comes together super duper quickly as well. Um, so that's pretty much all you need to know. Um, some good, interesting information about this little piece just here as well is that if you wanted to, you could change these beads. You could use like six mil rounds if you wanted to. You could try using even longer beads. You can change them to whatever shape and size that you want through the core. And then you can just create like a loop that is sort of fitting to that size. So, you know, when we made our first little loop, I just turn this over if you have a look it was like a, a nice sort of spacing to get from like the bottom of our crystal to the top here you can use less beads if you want it to be a little bit tighter if you want it to be wider you can use more beads and so forth so it's really really easy design to change whatever whatever you want to do the whole look looks completely different based on just a few simple changes so yeah instead of using the brick the brick gives you this really long elongated sophisticated look about it it doesn't look too compressed it doesn't look too clustered uh it looks just really, really elegant, which is why we've chosen these gorgeous crystal bricks. So it sort of spreads everything out a little bit. Where uh, if you wanted to have it really big and chunky, you could use even bigger beads on the side if you want to. Uh, it's quick and easy to make it a bracelet. It's quick and easy to make it a necklace. Uh, also as well, because it's relatively loose, it drapes beautifully. So it gives you this gorgeous curve for a necklace. You don't have to worry about the curvature shape as well. It's just a really simple, fun and easy technique to learn and is really, really versatile. So this is called flat spiral, this stitch, flat spiral stitch. And then basically, as I said, it just sits beautifully, it drapes beautifully, it looks fantastic, but the crystals, by being so large, are really, really sparkly, they really catch the light. We've tried to accompany them with gorgeous crystals and seed beads as well. I mean, you can, of course, go for more uh, contrasting seed beads if you want to design it in that sort of a way. But yeah, it's a really, really quick little design. Uh, Julie asks, could you make it into an earring as well? Yeah, of course you could. It would make a really nice earring. I mean, if you wanted to, you could even put just like a, a tiny little drop at the bottom of some shape. Maybe, I mean, it depends. Do you want to have it so that this is the front or whatever? But anyway, you could just sort of dangle something from, from the bottom to give it a nice finished off look at the base if you want to. You don't even have to. You could just put like a little seed bead at the bottom to finish it off and then it would sit really nicely as like a little mini earring. It's a, it's a nice idea. I like it. It's a good idea there from Julie. Um, 
you could turn it into like a belt if you wanted to. Or even what could look nice is like um, napkin ties, for example. Tie tie your, your napkins to each other. Because you can also turn it into one single piece really easily as well. So if you sort of just continue the, the, the process around, as you loop around, you can turn it into one single piece so that it will be matching... Uh, all the way on the opposite side as well. It, it can be joined one end to the other like that as well. It, 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 it is possible. It's up to you how you want to do it, but um, there's a lot of fun. But yeah, so I'll show you the 10 different colors on the Bead Spider website. So as per usual, I've got the link to the video. If you've missed today's tutorial, you can always come back and rewind and watch it whenever you want straight on the Bead Spider website, which looks like today this. So there it is there. There is the Bead Spider website for today. This big where it says Entice Necklace Kit. This is what you would click on if you want to watch today's tutorial. So I'll just show it to you. The same link is um, in the description as well if you want to go and view the products. But yeah, if we click this big picture that says Entice Necklace Kit, or you can go into the menu up here at the top where it says Kits and Tutorials, video tutorials, you can find the video tutorial there, or the video tutorial related products just below it on the very left side there. So you can go find that. But anyway, if you want to watch the video, you click on that big picture, you go, yep, the Entice Necklace live tutorial, hit play, and you can watch this at any time. If I hit play, it would be showing you what we're looking at right now. It would be a million times again and again into the television. But anyway, otherwise, the link in the description will take you to the place where you can view all of the related products. You can get three by seven bricks if you want to try them out. They're just here. But all the related products to make this particular design is in the link in the description. You can just click on that one. So if you're on Facebook, it's up above. If it's on YouTube, it's down below. There's individuals. If you want to get them one blue one or just one Azure Sea or one mermaid, this is the one I was demonstrating with, or just one purple, whatever it is, whichever color you like best, you can just choose it from here. Otherwise, any three or more, 15% off. So if you come over here and you click on this one, Make sure if you want to get three and you want to get that 15% off, you can't just go pick one here, pick one here, and pick one here. You've got to come in here and then select your options. So if you pick your options, this is the bundle product. Once you're in here, you've got all of your options there on the right. You can just go through, choose them all, whichever one you like. I mean, if you really wanted to and you wanted to get all 10 colors, you can do it. But as long as you've got at least three, you can say, I want a purple one. I love the mermaid that you demonstrated with. I want that one. Uh, I want the, the, the sparkling crystal and I want the, I don't know. Oh, the clear isn't in here, is it? Oh yeah, there it is. One... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Good, they're all here. Uh, I want a gold one. And you know what? I'm going to spoil myself and have an Azure C one as well. So that's four. As you can see, every single one of them, not $14.95, just £12.71 instead. So you get that 15% discount. Then you can add it to your basket, pop, job done, and you get your savings. But yeah. So that's that's on that little product there. If you want to choose, if you want to get that discount, pick any three or more and add those to your basket. Uh, I'll also show you just very quickly uh, the video tutorial related products from last week. So just over here, if I click on that one, see, look, the Jubilee bangle and all the other micro crystal kits. If you come onto that little section just there, you can still get the any three or more for 15% off of the Jubilee bangles. So you can choose three Jubilee bangles in the exact same way, or come down and at 10% off, we've got the Vienna crystal bracelet, and we've also got the discounted Monaco crystal bracelet as well, which if you have not seen what micro crystals are, I will show you very, very quickly what they look like because I've got a picture here. Uh, they look like, here we go. So the micro crystal seed beads, I'll just show you very quickly. Come on now, where are they? I'm trying to find the, the picture. It's not going to the next one. Where's that next picture? Here we go. There we go. So this is what they look like, the, the micro crystals in your work. 
and you can see they are the exact same size as your size 11 Japanese seed beads, so Toho and Mayuki, or your size 10 Preciosa seed beads. All three of them are the same size as those size 11 micro crystals. So if you want to try them out in a kit, you can get our Jubilee bangle, or you can get any of those little designs there that you like. That was, I think, possibly the shortest video we've ever done. It's that quick and that easy to make the design. You can literally make the whole necklace in probably an hour and a half, maybe two hours, even less. I don't know. Once you get the hang of it, you can like blast through it. But it's a really nice design. It looks spectacular. The beads that we've chosen, we've tried to make them look fantastic they are so sparkly they they really really catch the light we want to add some bling uh to to your designs so we've really gone for some nice big blingy three by seven mil crystals right down the center there uh but yeah that is everything do you know what i have a i have a, a confession to make there was a reason why this video why i was so pleased for it to be a really quick tutorial it's because in 15 minutes time, there's some Formula One qualif qualifying to watch. So I've managed to, I'm, I'm very pleased with myself. I've managed to show you absolutely everything and all you need to know so that you'd be able to make that necklace. And I've got time to go watch the Formula One as well. So great, great live session today. Uh, we've still got lots of people here watching, which is always lovely. Uh, just in case you're wondering, uh, my name is Matthew. Uh, but yeah, let's see, who have we still got? We've got uh, James says, we enjoyed the great tutorial. I'm, I'm glad about that. Thanks for watching, James. Uh, that's clearly just my cousin having a bit of a laugh. Uh, my cousin James there. Uh, we have Christine from Belgium. She's enjoyed it. Uh, Wayne says, I have to go. Thanks, Matt. Luckily, it was a nice short one for Wayne. He had to run off as well. Uh, Kay is still here. She says, have a great weekend and stay safe, everyone. Um, Eugenia says, thanks, Matthew. Great tutorial as well. We've still got Colleen here. Rebecca is still here. Uh, Rebecca says, amazing ideas. Yeah, I want to know what ideas you guys have. So, of course, always please do like, share, subscribe, all of those sorts of things um, as per usual. And, of course, drop some comments down below. Let us know which was your favorite color. There were 10, 10 different colors. So I want to know which one you like best. Um, plus, I want to know how you would use them. What ideas do you have for how you would use it? Would you turn it? Would you do it as a necklace? Would you do it as a bracelet? Would you turn it into a napkin tie? Earrings? Other ideas? Comment in your creative ideas on how you could use it. A bag strap? Maybe even uh, I think I I think I saw that one, um, but yeah, that's that's pretty much it for today. Um, but yeah, thanks everybody for watching. If you haven't done so before, we give you a a five pound voucher to try out some of our beading patterns. We have about a hundred and fifty or more, something like that, hundred and fifty of our beading patterns on the website. Uh, we sell the beads separately, we sell the crystals separately, we sell everything separately if you want to as well. Uh, but yeah, we can just, uh, yeah, if you want to get yourself a five pound voucher to try out some of our beading patterns, there is a little link in the description which says, give me my five pound pattern, uh, five pound pattern voucher. Uh, go check it out, it'll pop you into our email list, which is the best way to know what is coming because I am doing a live tutorial Every Friday, I do one at 3 p.m. UK time. So whatever time it was 48 minutes ago from right now, uh, assuming you're watching live. If you're not watching live, thanks for watching later. Uh, but yeah, if you're watching live right now, whatever the time was 48 minutes ago, that is the time that I go live every Friday. So you can come back and watch that. But like I said, if you sign up to the newsletter, there's two bonuses to it. One, you'll find out when my live streams are going to be and what they are and what all of our discounts and things are that are going to be in case you want to watch it with me if you want to make along and so forth. Um, but also, you get that £5 voucher to try out some of our beading patterns. But yeah, thank you all very, very much for watching. I hope you had lots of fun. I hope you learned something good, learned something new, and really enjoyed the technique. Uh, thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you all next Friday, same place, same time. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.